Welcome to the refill. Welcome to the refill. I'm your host, Ron Daniel. Listen, tonight we got another great episode, man. I'm glad y'all rocking with us tonight. I'm glad y'all tuned in tonight, man. Listen, if y'all been rocking with us the last 21 shows, y'all already know what we do, how we do it, how we get down, and what we do. But tonight, if you're just not tuning in, if you're new to the show, this is a gospel rap podcast featuring and highlighting the artists, the DJs, the promoters, the influencers, the innovators, people that make this thing rock and roll and shake and move all around the earth, man. Tonight, we got another great show, man. Listen, this next artist we bringing on, man. I've been on this brother for a long time, literally a long time. I'm not saying that because this a podcast, you're supposed to say all that good stuff. No, I've been on this brother for a long time, man. And in my state, and especially for gospel rap, I, I, I don't I don't call people legends. I don't take that light when I say that. He to me, he's one of the legends because he's been in it for a long time. He understands the grind behind it. He understand how it work. He understand how gospel rap moves. So I'm going to bring him on. But before I do, I'm going to let him know who we bring him on. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a pastor. Gospel rapper. A martial arts. We're going to talk about the martial arts, too. And he he participated on Ninja Warrior. We're going to talk about Ninja Warrior, too. And listen, he's just a servant of God, man. We're going to bring Rocky on. Rocky Rapid Fire. Talk to me, man. What's good, bro? What's going on, Ron Daniel, man? It's a blessing to be yes, with sir. you. I'm glad to be here. The Refill Show, man, it's been a minute, and I'm excited to be with you tonight, man. Man, we glad you turned. Man, we glad you came on, man. And and I was telling everybody, let me let me fix this stuff real quick. All right, I was telling everybody, man, that you know, it's it's. I remember I, we was talking before the show about. Um, you know, just the beginnings of gospel rap. I was talking about it a little bit, but I remember, I'm going to tell you how I met you, okay. or how I knew about you. Hmm. I remember, I'm going to go back to the beginning. I think we was doing the Lifeline around that time, and you came out to the Lifeline, and I met you at the Lifeline, but I was like, you know you know how you're putting the show together, everybody pulling at you. They like, hey, come mm -hmm. fix the sound. Hey, come yeah. check on the music. Come do all this stuff. So you got all these hats on and you got a rap. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm ready. Now we got to the show. Now I'm ready for it to be over. But, man, <laughs> I remember I was sitting with the DJ. And, man, mm -hmm. you got up. You know, you're just rapping, rapping. And, man, it's mm -hmm. like you got the karate kicking and flipping and twist. I said, man, wait a minute. What, what's going on? <laughs> I said, this brother different. You know, so, man, introduce yourself to the people, man. We're going to start the show, bro. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, Rocky Thomas, Rapid Fire, stage name, and uh, 43 years old. I've uh, been in it for a minute. Been doing gospel rap since uh, 1989. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy to say that, but the Lord has blessed us beyond belief. Travel with my family now. Uh, my two sons, my beautiful wife, Mandy, is Rapid Fire, and... Uh, Man, we just love the Lord, and we just uh, love gospel rap. I love writing songs, taking the scriptures and, and making them, you know, rhyme and making them uh, applicable to today's society, and uh, it's a family thing, and man, just blessed to be here, man. That's what's up, man. That's, that's you know what, one thing, and I know we're going to get into it all tonight. We're going to unpack it all tonight, but I know one of the things, one thing I tell people, people that, that the views that come on every week, Mm -hmm. And they kind of they kind of get a gist of how we get down now. Hopefully, you know that's the goal. But mm -hmm. they know I keep my ear to the ground on everything gospel rap. And so one thing I love, I know you and your wife, y'all been rapping together forever. Matter of fact, y'all mm -hmm. are the first husband wife couple that I know that mm -hmm. was rapping on stage ever. I want to say the second time I saw that. A husband and wife couple. I believe I was in. I might have been in Oklahoma somewhere. I said, mm -hmm. "Man, they up there throwing down." That's a, and they was. They said, "Yeah, they hood. That's a husband and wife rap group." I said, "Okay, mm -hmm. I know another one." Now, so now I know two. So <laughs> let me ask you this, right? 
We're yeah. gonna go all the way back. You said 89. Bro, okay. what sparked your interest? Cause I, mm. I love asking this question mm -hmm. with all the artists. What sparked your interest to do gospel rap? What was it? We know it was God, but what was it that said, yeah, let me let me do this? Well, that man, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> let's just say I was at Second Baptist Church in Conway, right. and I was in the youth group, and they were doing a um, you know, a choir concert, and they had this one song where they needed some rap. And I mean, it was, you know, back in the day, the rap was, uh, you know what I'm saying? It was right. real, just like, the, you know, birds and the bees and the stars and the trees and the, you know, it's just really, you know, really cheesy to be honest with you. Right. But I was introduced to the church rapper at the time who was a few years older than me. And he was taking beats, uh, secular beats and writing Christian lyrics to him. I'm talking about, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm talking about like, you know, too short. Right. And I mean, just all sorts of artists. He would go buy the instrumentals at Hastings and we would write stuff to it. And at the same time, this is going down. Uh, DC Talk is starting to, to crank right. up. Right. MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, to share my age, was getting going. And so we were we were learning hip hop dance routines. We were trying to incorporate all that together. And we did a uh, <laughs> did this did this show and we did the little rap on it and uh, everything went good. And from then I just fell in love with the, you know, with the art and man, I started writing songs and, you know, I think you and JB talked about this. Uh, shout out to James Berry that was on the show a few weeks ago. Shout out to James. And, man, he did a lot of producing and mixing and mastering for some of our projects, man. I appreciate that. But um, so anyway, he was, um, we were going along and all of a sudden, I was realizing like the first right raps I was writing is like, man, this is not good. You've been there, right? The first yes, few, right? <laughs> You're like, what in the world? Right. Look what we've done. We're having some fun, you know? I mean, it's just like, what? But anyway, from that <laughs> developed a passion. I met some other guys in church and we did a full concert one night, uh, 1989. And I'll never forget it. Our youth pastor was really upset with us because we invited the, the actual community out and they were having pizza that night and they didn't have enough pizza for everybody that came. And so we actually got uh, talked to pretty firmly that night. But man, after that, the pastor got on board, everybody started loving it. And then we just started to uh, work on dance routines, work on how, how we could integrate the rhymes. Um, and we took DC talk tracks and different, uh, you know, uh, PID and, and ETW, you know, all the, the old right. school, man, we just had a blast and uh, it sparked something in me that to this day has not even died. I mean, there's been peaks and valleys and there's been some, some, you know, downtime, but man, it's, uh, it's still a passion and a fire. We tell people we not, we may not be the best rappers, but we rap about the best. That's right, bro. And that's, that's the motto. That's the theme. And that's what we do. Even at 43, we're still, still kicking it. And you mentioned my wife, 20 years have been ministering with her uh, on stage. She was dancing with me for a little bit there. And then we kind of stopped that. And she did do a rap back in the day, but she's mainly, she won't admit that she rapped back in the day, but she did. And she did a good job. I remember. Anyway, <laughs> she's singing now. So right. she sings with us and, and my son sing and rap and dance with us. So that's that's how it all started, man. It's back in the day. That's what that's what's up, man. I I I, I love it's it's like three questions I always ask everybody to come on the show is, mm -hmm. you know, that's the first one, you know, how did you get involved with gospel rap? Because I tell yeah. people all the time, people that watch the show, I tell them say, Hey, you know, everybody, you know, you don't run into people every day waking up saying, you know, I think I want a gospel rap. You know, <laughs> somebody asked me, they said, Man, how you they said, man, how did you get involved in gospel rap? I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I was brushing my teeth. <laughs> and the Lord was like, do gospel rap. I didn't know who a gospel rapper was. I didn't know mm -hmm. nothing about gospel rap. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know, time, you know, went on and I got introduced to, you know, the Grape Tree, everything Grape Tree did back oh, yeah. in the day. And uh, sure. and the rest is history. You know, mm -hmm. let me ask you this, Rocky. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Let's go back to that first album. You talked about it a little bit. T t tell okay. us about. It. I always ask this. This all. This is always the second question. Like, walk us through 
trying to put that first project together. Give us the good, give us the bad, mm-hmm. give us the ugly and the ugly. Because <laughs> I, I tell you, hey, hold on, if I can first start. I tell everybody, I said, man, that first project was is 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 a mess. I know mine was. You know, I I, heard, I was listening to it the other day. I said, man, you know, that thing wasn't mixed right, but it was all right. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was all right. Exactly. Well, man, yeah. that's a great question. So there's kind of a twofold answer to this. One is we had the group mm-hmm. that we we started once we did the music. We we started doing drug free programs in right. schools. And so we did that for several years and we would do like the programs at night. So we did albums with the group um, in the studio and things like that. Um, It was Freedom Force and BCC, Brothers in Christ Coalition. It started as Brothers in Christ Posse. And then it went to Brothers in Christ Coalition. Then we went to Freedom Force. But we had amazing times. I might share some stories about some of those traveling days. But the bottom line is when we first put the first project together, with that was a solo project i used a mtv music generator off a sony playstation right (laughs) Right, i sat down one week at my it was a summer i think it was and i kept going over to to mandy's parents house and i put that on the tv and i spent a week making beats for that first project and then we went up to harrison paid 150 bucks to get 10 tracks done at just an just an old country studio didn't you know we didn't know what we were doing And man, it was a blessing, but it was tough. You know, there was a lot of things that you, you hear and you're like, well, that was off beat or that was, you know, off key or whatever. Um, And, but man, it was a blessing. And so um, the struggle is definitely still there. I've just learned over the years. Um, I don't make beats anymore. I think I heard you saying something about that. We just, I just don't have time to sit down and make beats from scratch when there's so many great beat makers out there ready for you to lease beats. So I just lease the beats and then we we just get it done. And it's so easy now with CD Baby that we just push it out to iTunes, Spotify. And uh, yeah, but that first that first project was uh, T-Rock um, and it was called Rapid Fire. And that's when I was on stage by T-Rock. And then after that, um, that was the first one, Rapid Fire. That's what's up, that's what's up. Yeah, I, I, re- I remember. <laughs> Look here, I, t- I tell people all the time, man, I remember, oh, let me say this real quick, you was talking about the, the Sony generator, now mm. you the second person I know that used that system, the first one that I heard, uh, the first artist I heard talk about it was Pun in uh, Houston, he was talking about it, I think show number four, he used the same thing to make beats, and he still make beats today, and so wow. he started out using that same system, and wow. so Man, again, man, you know, beats ain't my thing. I, I used to try, well, I tried making beats back in the day. I, I only thing I would do was uh, make the kick, the kick, the snare, and the bass line. That was it. And then my oh. little brother, who was way talented to me on the beats, he would just finish it off and add the ice into it. I'm like, man, you just need to make the beats. That ain't my thing. <laughs> yeah. Make the beats. I lay yeah. some down on it, and we can go with it. So, yes, sir. Beats ain't my thing. So let me, let me ask you this, Rock. Yeah. Now, you win gospel rap. You done already went to the studio. Now you got to hit that road. Now you got to get people to know who Rapid Fire is. Like, tell me, like, talk about the, I guess, the first show experience. Well, not the first, well, you talked about the first one, but just the first mm-hmm. early shows uh, that you experienced when people saying, hey, you know, was it, was the experience good, bad? Like, how did they view gospel rap? Like, talk about those first early shows. Okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> with us, it was tough because, I mean, we would do some festivals and different things like that. But when you go into the church, and, and you know what I'm talking about, right. um, especially back in the day before Lecrae and Toby Mac and everything kind of, yeah. made, you know, brought it to the mainstream, it was, it was challenging. I'm not going to lie to you. What we would do is I would tell people, before I would come to the church, I say, look, listen to the words. I said, we got some slow songs. They're meaningful. Uh, they're, you know, we believe they're anointed. Listen to the words of the songs and mm-hmm. realize that the, you know, the, how the great thou art and amazing grace and all that with the hymns, it's not going to reach some of the generation that's out there right now. You know, right. I tell people kind of off the subject. One day I was substitute teaching and I heard a kid third or fourth grade over in the corner 
and he was flipping every single m and m syllable verb everything made me blush and i'm a and i was an adult and i'm going man this ain't right so that was another reason that i got passionate about making music that would be an alternative to some of the you know junk that's out there today that we you know and so and now we know even more being a pastor it's so important what we put in our you know what we let come into our lives and our ears and our eyes things like that but um but yeah man it was one of those things where you just had to try to challenge them and say give me a chance let me just grab the mic let me just uh you know we're gonna pray and we're gonna let the lord lead and i'll tell you what really what really did it is god showed up like at the end we were doing the altar call Uh and kids come forward um and we saw like i mean all glory to god but we saw like five thousand saved in like five years through Uh the group ministry and then it continued on but we would have people come to the altar and pray to ask Christ to come into their life, uh, rededicate their life to, you know, and that right there, even the older people, when they saw that, they said, okay, now I see the impact nice. the gospel rap can have. And so then they were able to open things up for us even more, but you had to get established. You know what I'm saying? You had to make sure because a lot of times they, they pictured rap as, you know, we got the windows down, bass cranking, and, you know, and you can't understand a word they're saying. And so they had that preconceived notion of what the secular rap was. And they're like, we don't want that in the church. Right. And uh, we just definitely let the Lord lead us. Um, we went to Nashville one time and talked to some people. Um, and they were like, this is really good with the rapping and the singing. And they said, we believe that you're going to be trailblazers. And that's exactly what happened, I believe, mm-hmm. in our area. We were just able to to find something that, people could resonate. But what I love more than everything, more than anything is when the older people come up to me smiling, they say, I don't really care for rap, but I sure enjoyed that song. And and that makes a difference when they say, let me get a CD for my grandson, granddaughter. Then, you know, that, you know, why you're doing what you do. And, And man, as long as there's breath in my lungs, that's what I'll be doing. So definitely. That's that's what's up, man. I, I when you, when you said that, I just thought about my grandmother. She uh she passed away earlier mm-hmm. this year, and um no. and I remember one of my early shows. She was in the audience. I didn't know she was coming. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I kid you not. You know, it's a lot of people in the audience, and mm-hmm. you know, you know how this you rapping, you really can't see people. You know, especially sure. as, as you start looking to the back of them, you really can't see people. It's kind of all blur. And yeah. so <clears throat> after the show, she walked up and she said, she told me, she said, she said, baby, I don't know nothing you were saying <laughs> <laughs> all night. She said, but you kept saying Jesus and that's all right with me. And that's mm. what she said. And I remember that was a story. And then another story, I tell this all the time. Good. I was brought in to a, uh, to a church, a good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, he said, man, look, he said, man, I, I came to one of your shows. I like what you do. He said, but I'm going to let you know they're not really open for it. <laughs> but <laughs> he said, do your thing. I said, well, that's what we're going to do. You know, win, lose, or draw. That's what we do. So yeah. I remember <clears throat> we coming there, look, Rocky, we got on army fatigues. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about we swagged out so just, everything arm uh-huh. and fatigue. We walk out there, yeah. man. Jay's on arm mm-hmm. and fatigue. They're like, man, who is this dude? So <laughs> <laughs> we get on stage, man. We rapping, and so mm-hmm. I remember this this guy. I didn't know he was the pastor when I was rapping. He's sitting front row. I mean, wasn't mm-hmm. moving. The youth just getting loose. They just getting down. Folks in there like, yeah, I like this. Mm-hmm. And he stood up after I got off stage and I, you know, went to my table and stuff. He mm-hmm. said, at the end of the show, he said, uh, you know, people was coming up getting prayed for just over rap music. And so mm-hmm. he stood up front of his church and he said, listen, he said, I'm 84 years old. He said, Whoa. this is the first time. He said, after to tonight, he said, I know that God can use anything to draw people. 
He said, mm. cause, he said, cause I, when I heard rap was coming, he said, I don't know, but I trusted my youth pastor. That's all he <laughs> said. He said, he up there with the mom and fatigue, so I don't know what he was doing. You know, but we yep. was getting loose and he got loud in there. And so, mm. but I remember those two stories. I forever remember those two stories, man, cause it's like, you got to break those barriers, bro. You know, yes. you got to, it's rough. You know, I tell That's people all the time, true. gospel rap is like, Climbing the rough side of the mountain, it, you know it's a mountain. You know the the mountain here, Little Rock Pinnacle Mountain. You know mm-hmm. they got the smooth side. You can walk up. It's a nice tree. You can eat. You can yep. drink a little water. You can talk and laugh mm-hmm. and go to the top. But the yep. backside is an actual trail on the backside that a lot of people don't climb because it's just rocks all the way up. And so that's mm-hmm. gospel rap, that rocket side. And so, man, yep. I, but it's it's rough, but it, it's been rewarding. Let me ask you this, bro. Yeah. So now you on that road. People like, yeah, we know who Rocky is. Man, how do you incorporate martial arts in the mm. music? Because when I first saw that, I think we was talking in the beginning. When I first saw that, I said, okay, this is different. And I love, mm. I love going to shows where I see the little, what they call the nuances, the, the little differences in the show. Like, okay, this dude... DJ different. Okay, this dude rap. He don't move. He just sitting in front of the stage and the whole room shaking. And then you come on stage, you rapping, and you like, hey, get this mic. You just start doing everything in my shots. Man, how did you incorporate? What was it? Or when was it used? Like, okay, let me incorporate this into the muse. Yeah, man, that's a good question. So one of my first passions um, was martial arts. Um, uh-huh. And I ended up uh, being in Taekwondo in Conway. And we started, you know, I started thinking about, okay, all the gifts and talents that we've been given, mm-hmm. you know, God wants us to use them for his glory. And so I got to thinking, okay, so I've, I've got, um, I was teaching Sunshine Academy gymnastics. I was teaching hip hop dance um, there. And I was also um, doing the martial arts and I don't want to call it performance ministry, you know, but I liken it to this. When Jesus was out walking around, um, he would go and perform a miracle, right? right? I mean, he would do something and just everybody would be amazed. And then he's like, okay, now that I've got your attention, sit down. Let me teach you. Right, right, right. right. And so that's what I thought. I said, okay, you do a backflip or you, you know, do a butterfly kick or you put a, put some nunchucks in your routine. You're going to get their attention. And then once you get their attention, you say, okay. You've heard what I've said. You've seen what I've done. Now let's have a seat. Let me tell you what I'm about. And so it was just a tool, uh, just another tool. And so I started incorporating. I was like, how can we incorporate hip hop, dance, martial arts? Uh, We started breaking boards a little bit. Um, What's crazy though is a few years, um, a few years ago, um, I was I was done with martial arts, and all of a sudden I went and visited a place up here, uh, a few miles down the road, and they said. Oh, so you're a black belt. And I was like, yeah, I'm second degree black belt. I'd love to get my third degree black belt. Well, they said, well, listen, if you will lead our martial arts demo team, then uh, we'll let you have classes for free in in return. And I was like, really? So we got together, formed Warriors of the Light, and Mm -hmm. we did a whole, uh, you know, a whole leg of of school tours with martial arts, board breaking, uh, fight scenes, high energy stuff with the rapping and the dance and put it all together and saw a lot saved through that too. So every time I get a chance to do something a little bit different, um, whether it's theme songs or whether it's the martial arts or anything, I'm like you, I want to see something different, something right. unique that stands out and it will catch their attention. And then they go, Oh man, this guy's rapping really fast. Well, that's not what it's about is how fast I rap. It's the fact that now you, I've got your attention let me tell you about what God did in my life, you know? So, right, right, right. Yeah. That's what's that, up, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what's up. I mean, and, and, and that's, I, I like how you say it, you know, God, Jesus did that. You know, say, hey, y'all see these miracles, now let me get your attention. Now I got your attention, let me let me yeah. tell you why you're real. Man, that's, because again, when, when I saw, when I saw you do that the first time, I said, okay, mm-hmm. this had this brother get down. You know, mm-hmm. he karate kick. And listen, I remember, <laughs> I remember when we did the Lifeline, man, uh-huh. that show, not the show, but the stage, man, that stage was so, it was so small. It was like, I was hoping, mm-hmm. I said, man, I hope you don't fall off this stage. Because <laughs> <this> stage. <laughs> oh, 
I remember that. Yep. And that stage was like, man, that thing was like four feet by. Yep. Man, I want to say maybe 15. It was 15 feet wide. There in the maybe. Banquet. Yeah, in the banquet room there. In yep. the banquet room, right. You mm-hmm. remember? And so, yep. listen, when we, when we got that stage, they, they was telling us at the state house, they said, hey, uh, we got all these, you know, different stages, different price ranges. I told mm-hmm. them, I said, look, uh, <laughs> I'm not finna pay all that for this. For that, for that big stage. What's the what's give me a good stage? They said, Well, you can get this four by fifteen. I said, Okay, let's do that. I just hope that she said, Now, are they gonna be doing she said, she the lady told me at the time, she said, Now, I you know, it sounds interesting what you're doing, but are they gonna do a lot of jumping and moving around? I said, I don't think so. We just need something stand on. <laughs> so she said she said, good. She said, okay, we'll use this. And uh, and you got up there, got the move. And I said, oh, man, I don't feel to have a stage. I got to pay these people. So, <laughs> that's funny, so, man. I just man, try to, man. We just try to make do, man. We've had a lot less. That's the fun thing about traveling is, you right. know, you'll get there and their sound system. They're like, oh, we got a good sound system. You'll be you'll be fine. We get there. The speakers are blown. Right, the right. Start working, and they put you in a little box and say, okay, we're ready. And you're like, man, you we got to do something here. And so, I'm sure you have stories uh, upon stories of getting somewhere. And but you know what, the Lord always worked it out. We Every went to time. Wabasika. We got called to Wabasika one time, and they said, uh, and we were, uh, you know, we were there, and they said, we're well, it's a picnic, family uh, church picnic. We need you to do uh, 20 minutes. Well, the guy came around a little bit later, said we're running behind time. Uh, can you do 15 minutes? And I'm like, well, everything is mixed, you know, because back then we'd mix it start to finish right, nonstop because right, right. it wasn't the the number of songs. It's how much you could squeeze into each minute, you know? Right, right. And uh, anyway, he said 15. I said, well, I'll see what I can do. Well, then he comes back later. He's like, you know, we're still running behind. Can you cut it down to 12 minutes? <laughs> so by the time we got up there, it was like one or two songs and the speakers were blown. I was like, man, this is, right. this is difficult. But, you know, it's all part of it. You know, we live and Live and learn, but yeah, man, that's a that's a blessing. I love what you were doing with the Lifeline. I was uh, blessed to be a part of it. And you mentioned shaking the stage, man. Those guys you had in there, they were jumping around. I remember Whoa. Mike Shelton and some of yeah, them. Oh my. <laughs> he, got that fire. he was jumping around. I was like, yeah, that stage isn't going to last very long. Hey, and the whole t- listen, Mike, the whole yeah. time, <laughs> the whole time they on stage. I remember. I want to say right before we, I want to say it was around the beginning, right around the early years of the lifeline when we when we first went over to the state house, uh-huh. and that stain stage, I remember mm. everybody got on that stage to do a, like a freestyle at the end, a freestyle oh, session. Man. Oh, and I'm man. sitting in the back and I'm like, man, I hope they don't tear this stage. Oh, I'm back there <laughs> swagging my hand. I'm like, <laughs> yep. don't tear this That's stage up. The folks gonna yeah. come and talk about man, you always like five hundred dollars an hour, man. Well, man, <laughs> hey, this was, man, the lifeline, man, Lord willing, we gonna crank mm-hmm. that back up real soon. We figured out, yeah. you know, how to work it in with social media now, so we, we know, we be having mm-hmm. talks about. It. We gonna, I let you know, I okay. definitely let you know about it. But bro, let me ask you this, man. Yeah. You and your wife is a duo. Now I'm, I'm talking before the kids, before the sure. kids. Now you got kids. Sure. We all got kids now. Before yeah. the kids. How did y'all, what was y'all, was it a strategy? Was this a game plan to say, okay? Because I know when, when I remember when I when I met you, I believe your wife, she rapped a little bit, but she sang most of the songs she was singing. And I yes. do remember that. And yep. so what was y'all's strategy behind, was it like, hey, we just going to try or, hey, this is what we do and we just going to see how it go? Like, what's, what was y'all's strategy behind it? Well, one of the first, the very first school program that we did uh, was Leslie, Arkansas, mm-hmm. and we met her there, and uh, we got to be real good friends with her family, and then th- she joined our group. She was one of our singers, and so <clears throat> everything was going good, and we started dating toward you know the end of that run, and one night mm-hmm. we got a call that um, there was some, um, there was just some things that weren't very. Um, very Christ-like that were going on with some of the, you know, with the members or whatever. And so right. we, um, I had to make a decision and I, I opened my Bible and it just said, beware of, the, you know, hypocrites among you, what they do in the right. dark will be brought to light. 
And I was like, okay. And I called Mandy in there and I said, look, I said, God's given us talents that I can rap and you can sing said, let's just minister together. And that was when we actually stepped away from the group, which was a difficult time. Mm -hmm. And we, and we formed rapid fire. And from then on, we realized when I met her, she was doing Southern gospel Mm -hmm. and I was a rapper and Obviously, that's totally different worlds. Right, right. And, and we even wrote a song about it called Country and Rap. And what's really crazy is I, I pretty much uh, would say that song doesn't exist anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's right. one of those things. But we would go to Little Rock, even to the shows where it would be in a lot of the urban community. Mm. And they would request that song, Country right. Rap. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> you want to hear the banjos and you want to hear country and rap? Right. So it was amazing. But anyway, we did that. But what's so cool is I love to, to be able to rap. But when she takes over and she starts singing, when she starts doing worship, or when people are tired of, you know, you know what I mean? Tired and need a break. Mandy comes on the scene with the voice of an angel and just totally transforms things. And uh, God takes over. And so it's amazing. And so I love being able to share the stage with her. We've grown a lot together. But to answer your question, man, we just said, you know what? Let's just do it together. And so we hit, had a flatbed trailer out at our church um, June 8th, I believe it was, maybe 2002-ish or something. Mm-hmm. And, man, we jumped up on that platform. We had, you know, food for the community. And we just did a few of our songs. And, Man, it went it went really really well, and from then on we just continued on wherever the Lord leads. We will try to go, man. That's what's up, man. I I, I love hearing that story. That and to me, <clears throat> that's the that's the one of the unique unique things about gospel rap because mm-hmm. you know in the secular rap, you know them cats they don't they don't talk about a lot of them are married, and they don't right. talk about. They married, and people they see them. They say, "Wait a minute, you talking about this? And you've been married to your wife for fifteen years, but you got all these women in your video. You know, mm-hmm. it's just if they. I know they do it for an image, but the thing about on the gospel rap side, the Christian hip hop side, that's what I love seeing that because yeah. I mean I've seen it even in my own marriage how people mm-hmm. say, "Man, you know, y'all married, and y'all flow a different way. Like it's like if if I'm on stage, my wife hand all the things at the table and now she's doing more speaking in her in her career and her profession mm-hmm. and I do all the stuff at the table. I'm I'm doing mm-hmm. all the sign up emails and selling the products and, you know. And they're yeah. like they're like, man, they they come up to the table, they say, Man, don't you rap? I say, Yeah, I still rap, but I'm doing this today. You know, so yeah. you know, and I, I love the way y'all flow and 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 um it, it's yeah. cool to have and for people to see that example, because it's it's like what y'all are doing is like y'all breaking down those things, how how, pop, how people view the rappers that are the secular rappers that are married, and they get to see wait a minute here goes somebody that living godly, and mm. they doing it for Christ, and it, they don't look like them secular dudes that's out there married uh-huh. 15, 20 years and got mm. all these other women around. So that's cool, man. I, I love that, man. Let me ask you this, bro. Yeah. Now you rapping, you met your wife, y'all moving around, shoulder, shoulder, show. Bro, what how you get into pastoring? And I'm gonna say this before you answer, I love talking to the artists that are now the pastors because y'all see it totally different. Y'all see the game. To me, it's almost like the DJs. The DJs see the gospel rap music genre different. Yeah. The past to see it totally different because I, I know for me, I went from being talked about by a ton of pastors. I mean, mm. or talked about on radio shows, uh, don't bring up to our church, you know, or if you go to mm-hmm. the church, mics being muted and they come up there saying, mm-hmm. let me tell you, this ain't what it is. I'm like, wait a minute. We just drove three hours. <laughs> it is what it is. So, you know, <laughs> we here. And so, uh-huh. been there and done that, but man, now yeah. you are pastor, bro. Like, how how did you get, mm-hmm. how, how did you say, okay, this is what God want me to do. He want me to pastor now. And then how do you view gospel rap now 
being a pastor? Mm. Wow. Man, that's a really good question. Um, best way to answer this is that <clears throat> when I was dating Mandy and we were doing the music, I was also helping out with the youth over at our church, Blackenburg right. Foursquare. And so I ended up working with the youth and then ended up being a youth pastor for like 18 years. Wow. Well, um, that was a passion of mine. Things were going good. We were able to, the church was, would able, enable us to travel. Right. So we would still have the ministry. Um, and then I also became associate pastor at the time. Now, this is something I really want every listener to hear. Um, I got bogged down, man. I had Warriors of the Light. I had a group called Cross Soldiers, me and two other guys that were rapping. Um, I also had Rapid Fire. I was associate pastor. I was youth pastor. I had my job. I think I was doing some college stuff. Man, it was just too much. I know, and bro. one of the hardest decisions I ever did as I went before the church and I said, look, I said, effective today, I'm resigning associate pastor and youth pastor. I'm stepping away from Warriors of the Light and Cross Soldiers. I'm going to focus on my family and rapid fire. And man, because it was a competition, you know, they would call up and it would be like, hey, we want Cross Soldiers. Well, what about Warriors of the Light? What about right, my family? Right. You know, it's just really difficult. So went through a season of, of learning. And uh, after all that, um, I was able to, to get back into to youth pastoring and things were going good. And then one day, um, our pastor of like 20 years uh, or maybe 18 years actually um, just just walked away, man. Mm. And we were like, whoa, what are we going to do? Well, people were kind of looking at me and I developed relationships and right. and I was like, it, it ain't me. I'm not a pastor. It's <laughs> that happened. You know what I'm saying? I, I know. <laughs> I mean, I even had the four square uh, leader from over like 200 churches at a church camp a year or two before that said, would you ever want to pastor your own church? I'm like, listen, I'm not going to put anything out of God. You know, I'm not going to limit God, but my heart right now, no way. Not right. That's not what I'm in for. Well, we were praying and Sunday morning, a preacher from Little Rock came on 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm sure you've probably seen him on the local channels. Uh, and he starts preaching a message called God can choose you without your choice. Oh, I know. <laughs> and, and I looked I over know. at Mandy. She looked over at me. We're both we're both crying right now. Right. And we realized at that moment for this time that that's what I was supposed to do. And man, it was challenging. It was uh, it was definitely there's been a lot of highs and a lot of lows. But I will say this. I'm going in May. I will have been pastoring as senior pastor of a wonderful church, Bachenberg mm -hmm. Square for five years, man. That's what's Crazy. up, man. Yeah, and so That's I'll just be honest with you. Rappers, they tell stories through the word, mm. right? Rappers. Pastors, they do the same thing. They incorporate stories, they take the scriptures, and they try to break it down so that all ages and all walks of life can get it. And so it's all the same. And one time I walked off the stage after uh, ministering, preaching, I said, man, I said, I never thought I would say this, but I like preaching about as good as I like rapping. Right, and I right. thought I would never say that. And that's when I knew I was supposed to be there at that moment. And man, I enjoy it. I love getting to go to church and I love getting to uh, preach the gospel to see the reactions. And ultimately, when the altar hits, have people come and pray. And our church is about salvation, inspiration and restoration through Christ. And so it's just a little church here north of Clinton, Buckenberg Foursquare, where we got the best leaders and the best people, man. And I'm blessed to be a part of that church to lead it. That's what's up, man. I, I, I know of him that, what, what was the name of that message? You said the preacher said, yeah, what was it called again? Yeah, he said, God can choose you without your choice. Ooh, my and the guy actually, listen, Ron, the guy actually said, listen, I'm going to tell you I'm here. And I didn't even apply for this job. That's what right. he said. I, said I didn't even go in and fill out an application or nothing. And right. he's a senior pastor of a large church in Little Rock. And I thought, man, how crazy is that? So that's man. what happened. And now we're just rocking along, man. And the Lord is good. We're just looking forward to when we can kind of open things back up, if you know what I'm saying. Because right. we're, right. we're kind of limited right now. But we got two services going. Our church, Bachenberg, FoursquareChurch.com. And uh, man, 
it's a blessing for sure. And it's something that goes hand in hand with rapid fire, because even though we do Southern gospel at times, we still do the hymns at times. We do contemporary Christian. Guess what? We still get to do some rap. So right, every right. now and then, you know, you come to the church and we'll get to do some rapping too. So it's definitely a blessing. And to answer your question about the other side, it's, it's definitely different, man, because I know my heart and I know what I would bring to the table when it comes to ministering at a church. Right. But when somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm a gospel rapper. Can I come minister at your church? Man, it's a whole nother element when you've got a flock that right. you got to protect. Right. And I promise right. you, I see the other side more now knowing that, okay, so you're going to have baggy pants on, your pants going to fall down. You're going right. to be, you know what I mean? Right. Is there going to be, is there going to be, uh, is there going to be things that are going to be dishonoring the Lord? Because in, in God's house, we're not doing that. And I had people that I, I, I dearly love, friends of mine that are really good. And I had to tell them, look, I'm not, we're not ready to be able to do what you're doing inside right. of our church. But let's do a youth event outside, make it happen. And, and I'll be honest with you, I see the other side and I understand where those pastors were coming from when they said, I don't know about this. I, I get it a lot more than I did when I was on the other side. So it, it does. It's good to have both sides. Right, right. And you, you, you hit it on the head because, you know, you, you got to you got to protect the flock. And yes. now yeah. I've, I've gotten more mature in gospel rap. Mm. And I, I, I understand. I've had, man, so many conversations with pastors. I mean, youth pastors, pastors that they, they called or, or text and say, "Hey, one day I don't get it. I don't understand gospel rap. I, I see you doing it. I don't understand it. I'm 65, 70 years old. I don't know mm. what y'all saying. <laughs> I don't get it. So what I would tell to them, I say, look. I said, just cut the music off and listen to what we saying. I said, right. you know, the, you know, rapping, you know, in Texas being on chopped and screwed. I said, mm -hmm. I can, I can screw my whole album down, and you can mm -hmm. listen to it word for word, and it sound like I don't care. All he talking about is the gospel over these fat beats, you know. So, I've had the conversations, and I've had pastors this, this saying, hey, you know, same thing. They say, hey, you know, my church ain't ready. You know, mm -hmm. they're not ready. You coming in, and, and and we know how you coming. I'm saying, well, well that's cool. And I, I'm going to say this, too. Mm -hmm. I've learned over the years that I don't I don't battle with pastors no more. Mm -hmm. In the early years, I would, and I'm not saying that for people that's watching, I'm not saying they're in a bad way, like, oh, he going out and starting fights with pastors. I said, no, what I'm saying is, and when when you young and you you full of zeal and and you like okay yeah the Lord told me to do gospel rap and you trying to figure out why you you were invited to a church but the pastor's like we not ready right now well why not this rap and they I'm, I'm look I'm like well they listen to the rap as soon as they leave yeah. all you gotta do is yeah. cut they cut their phone on and they listen to the music but they just mm -hmm. wasn't ready and so as I matured now it's more. I get a conversation now. They say, hey, yeah. you know, we want to bring you in, uh, but t tell me about, I want to know about you. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember one time <laughs> I went to this church, man, and we drove, and normally I'm, I'm not big on requesting a lot of things. You know, when when you coming in out of town, they say, well, what do you want? You know, do you want this? You want some food? I said, no, just give me a room. Some yeah. cold water, and if y'all, I prefer wireless mics, but if you don't get wireless mics, that's cool. Yeah. And so I'm sitting in the room, read my Bible, ready to go up. Read my Bible. I got to do a whole hour set. Mm. And the pastor of the church come in, and, and I don't know this dude from nothing. Dude had a bald head, shaved bald head, cowboy boots on. <laughs> oh. And he sat down beside me, he said, Mm. He said, uh, so you Ron Day? I said, yeah. And I'm like, and my mom, I'm like, who is this dude? You know, yeah. I'm trying to read. I want to, hey, man, read my Bible. Leave me alone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so he was like, I'm the pastor of this church. And then he was like, now, I heard about you. Tell me about you. And I was like, mm. well, what do you want to know? I saw gospel rapping. I said, and I told him, I said, listen, we ain't finna talk about, we talking about everything the street's not talking about. I said, yeah. all you got to do is enjoy the show you see. And so 
Ever since yeah. that, we we good friends now. And so, man, I get it. What you just yeah. said, and I hope people that's watching, especially for the gospel rappers that's getting into it, don't yeah. be mad at the pastors because the pastors have to protect the flock too. You know, don't right. don't go in. Oh, he don't understand. He don't understand mm -hmm. what God, this is my gift. Like, don't get into that stuff. Yeah. Just have a conversation. And if it work out, God going to make it work out eventually. Exactly. You know, he'll make it. And, and I've seen I've seen where I went into some places. Uh, they mm -hmm. wanted me to come. And some people just say, hey, we're just going to bring you in and talk on a panel. I said, okay, cool. Because I'm talking about everything gospel rap. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, then after that, they was like, okay, can you come to the youth night? And then I was like, okay, cool. And then after that, they said, okay, we got this big event. Can you come to this? So you kind of work your way in yes. steps to where they warm up to you. So that's yeah. good. Let me ask you this, bro. Yeah. Ninja Warrior. Mm. I'm a, before I ask you this question, I'm going I'm to I'm confess to everybody. Okay. I'm a casual fan of the Ninja Warrior show. Okay. Every time it come on, if it's on TV, I promise you, I sit and watch the whole show. I'm not a big TV watcher, yeah. but if it's on, if I'm just clicking the channel, I say, oh, okay, Ninja Warrior. And I, sometimes, mm -hmm. now correct me if I'm wrong, like I've seen the championships. I've mm -hmm. seen where they have the, um, I think they're the pre-trials in each the different cities, like Las Vegas, Austin, Texas. Yes. They have the pre-trial. So I'm a casual fan of the show. I'm not saying it because we're talking like I really watch it. And so, yeah. and then I've watched enough to say I'm familiar with some of the faces because they say, okay, this guy, he tried to get in the show in Austin. Now they in Hawaii somewhere. Okay, he didn't make it there. Now he in <laughs> Las Vegas, and then he finally ran up the wall and hit the buzzer, yeah. <laughs> and the smoke's going. <laughs> I yeah. said he finally made it. So, bro, what? How, how you get involved with Ninja Warrior? How, how you get involved with the show, man? All right, man. This is. I, I look back on my life, and man, so blessed with the right. things that I've gotten to do. And, oh, man, the way that this happened is I was watching the show one night. It came on TV, and I was like, Mandy, you know, I, I'm kind of flexible and, and in pretty good shape. I bet I could do some of that stuff. Well, I got up the next morning and uh, found a guy in Fort Smith, Sean right. Summers, who had a course built at his house. Right. And I was like, I got to check this out. And I found out real quick, it's a lot harder than it looks. It's, <laughs> yeah, not, I believe. Monkey, it's not monkey bars swinging like elementary right. school. Right. It's a whole nother level and grip strength you need and all this stuff. And I was like, man, and it really humbled me quick, mm. but it also lit a fire and a passion. And I started training and I started working out. Well, then they took submissions. And so what you did is you made a video mm. and you tell your story. I mean, like your life story, you fill out this online application and here's the deal. There are thousands upon thousands. I think it's 70, 80,000 people now trying out every year. Right. They can only take, uh, when I did it, 2014, they could only take 100 people for every city. And that's the regionals you were talking about. And then right. out of those 100, only 10 people get a profile and actually get a story uh, with some airtime on NBC. So I was like, man, just to get on the show would be awesome. Well, we put together the video. And I'll be honest with you. I had tried it. Nothing happened. The next year, tried it again. I think it was the second or third year. Right. But what happened was the story. In 2013, we had a tornado. And it came through and it took our church and it damaged our home. And um, it was tough, man. It was one of the right. toughest things we've had to be through other than my Blaze's heart surgery, which I'm sure we'll get to that. Right. But right. basically, it was... Um, it was one of those things where I knew God was going to do something. I didn't know what at the time. In almost a year to the day, I was on American Ninja Warrior. Five million people watched that episode mm -hmm. where I was rapping and doing martial arts and proclaiming God to everybody. And I'll tell you, I couldn't have dreamed it up any better. So even in the midst of the evil and what the enemy meant for bad, My. God turned it around for good. And I'll tell you a story. I was in, I was in Dallas. And I got real nervous, forgot everything they taught us. You get up there, all the camera and the lights, it's at night. And I start and I made it through the first obstacle, barely. 
Now I get to this big old log drop. You remember that? Right, right. They got to hold on to it and just swing down. Exactly. Right, 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 I'm like, right. I'm like, I'm not that big of a person. And I got to wrap my arms around this thing. So I went to do this and it dropped and I fell down and I caught my, uh, you know, caught myself, fell back and it was over. Well, I was disappointed and I got back to the house and I got an email a few days later and it said hometown filming. And I'm like, hold up. And I called him. I said, you guys want to come to Bakkenberg? Uh, I fell in the water. You got the wrong guy. And they said, we know what happened, but we love your story. And we want to come and showcase what you do. And I was like, oh, man. So we they came up, one from New York, one from L.A., met us. And we spent like 10 hours filming for like three minutes spot. Good. Man, I was so tired after that, but it was amazing. The Lord blessed it mightily. And when I was doing some behind the scenes stuff for them, I started rapping and I started rapping about Jesus. And you're going to love this. At the end of the rap, they said, OK, cut. I said, listen, we can't use that. We're going to have to change something. I said, Here we go. <laughs> right, right, here we have go. To Jesus out. Here we go. We're ready for it. And they said, listen, you cannot say the words NBC because that's the network and we're right. promoting the show. Right. And I'm like, oh, so I can keep Jesus in the rap. And from then on, it was just amazing how they gave me a platform to share what we did. Some shows came out of it. And man, it was an amazing experience. I'll never forget it. And from that, I got with Sean, the guy I told you about. Right. And now I have my own course at my house and during good weather on Monday nights, I teach at the Ninja Barn right across from the house. And I teach Ninja Warrior every week to kids and, and youth alike. So and minister as I do it. So it's amazing, man. Love it. That that that's what's up, man. That that's what's up. And and I love hearing the story. Let me tell you, man, I'm not saying this for a show. Did, sure. I love hearing, you know, because people think all y'all do is rap. I'm like, no, nah, man, we got life outside of rapping, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Somebody told yeah. me something, man, when they, when they see me, like, in the middle of the day, like, what I do nine to five work, mm -hmm. I design websites and marketing and all that stuff. And so when somebody yeah. see me, they say, man, you the rapping dude. You rapping? I said, no, mm -hmm. not today. We talking about your website. I ain't rapping nothing. That's my weekend <laughs> stuff, you know. I ain't, yep. I ain't rapping today, but what you what you want? And so I love how, especially for the gospel rappers who looking at this, who thinking like, oh, I'm just gonna rap, 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 rap. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. man, you got to have some outside of that, you know, not just rap. That's good, that's cool, yeah. but do some other thing. And 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 I like how you said how I went from one thing and that's the ninja bone. And so, and you get the ministry, again, another ministry opportunity, you know, and I yes. love that because, you know, I've learned over the years, you know, God can use anything, anything to minister, anything. Man. I mean, I've been in sessions where I wasn't rapping or, or if I'm sitting in a room, I remember one time I was called to talk about uh, website design. And it was like, hey, come down to, uh, I think it was Star City. Come to Star City. We don't know nothing about websites. Teach us about websites. I said, okay, cool. So I went down there, and at the end, it turned into a whole, you know, talking about the Lord and God when the, when the class was over. So I've learned, I said, you know, God can use anything, anything to minister, man. And that's cool. You're doing that. But again, I am a real casual. I'm not a hardcore fan, but I'm a casual fan. When that show on, I actually watch it. I've been sitting at home, I'm talking about, man, I know about the the net, the law, mm -hmm. run across the law. <laughs> uh, and then, I mean, look, the best part to me is not is not when they got to run up that, that rap. What, what's that, what they call that rap? It's kind of shaped with the curve. What, the, what they call that thing? It, uh, it's called the warped wall. Okay. It's, so, that's not the best part of the show to me. It's, okay. It's really two parts. The very last obstacle, because it's like they'll get through the whole course, 
And yeah. then they'll sit there for the last one. <laughs> they be like, let me get through this thing. And then they yeah. get there, and everybody clap like, yeah, he made it, she made it. And then they look at that wall like, man, let me get up this wall. And I say something, man, run up that wall and slide down. And I yeah. said one dude, he just kind of took off, and it's like he got halfway up the wall, and then dude kind of leaped. And grab it. Yeah. I said, man, them boys be getting it. I said, it, yeah. it ain't for me, man. I know I got to train my butt off just to do it. I said, it well, ain't for me. I'll be honest with you. The show that I was on, right. they replay, they re-air that show on like uh, local channels. Like literally, right. it seems like it comes on once every couple of years. But what happens is there was a little girl that was five foot. Her name right. is Casey. And she got up the wall for the first time on our episode. It was the Dallas Regional right, Qualifier. Right. So everybody, it was so cool that we were on that show because it enabled uh, people were like, hey, I, I, I was watching that show. And she got up that wall, first lady to get up the wall. So um, I will say this to anybody that's listening, um, if, if it's all right to kind of veer. Go, go ahead, bit. bro. Go ahead. Okay. Um, when you talk about God can use anything, mm. I had always done gospel rap. And I actually had never even imagined trying to write something that didn't have Jesus in it. Right. 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 I just was like, man, I just don't know. And one day, uh, 1037 The Buzz mm-hmm. up at the radio had a uh, Razorback competition. Yeah. T- hey, talk two. about that. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You've done your homework, man. You're going right. to hit, you're gonna hit me all over. So, <laughs> yeah. So here's what happened. Uh, they called or uh, they said, we want the best Razorback song. Right. Well, I sent one in uh, rapping and I didn't know, I felt, I'll be honest with you, I kind of felt bad because I'm like, I love the hogs, but uh, this isn't a Christian rap. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. I think I said, God bless you or something, but that was it. Well, the Lord showed me something very powerful. That night, um, I got third place in the competition. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. All these people put in, I got third place. Well, I remember Halloween night, I got an email. And it was from the U of A marketing director. Mm. And he said, we love your song and we want to play it at the Tennessee home football game next week. If with right. your, and I'm like, okay, 70,000 people there. Okay. Yeah. Let me think yeah. about it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, play it. <laughs> so, like, yeah, go right. for it. So I was excited. Well, then I had people calling me while it was playing before kickoff going, listen, they're playing your song. And I was like, are you kidding me? It was amazing. But here's what happened. I got home that night and this is what I want to get to. And I got an email. And back then we were using a a program called vibe deck for our downloads. And it would say, John from Fayetteville just downloaded the Razorbacks are coming. Mm -hmm. And then a few minutes later, it would say, John from Fayetteville just downloaded. Everyone prevails in Christ. Right. Right. And that's when it hit me. That if we go outside the four walls, God gave me a platform for ministry for his name to be glorified in front of 70,000 people that I never would have got that from a gospel rap. And then from then on, I realized theme songs are another avenue that God can use to draw people to him. Yes, sir. You you so hit it on I, the head, bro. Listen, yeah. man, I'm so glad you said that because yeah. it's... it's Man, I'm 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 with you. I'm with you on that a thousand percent. Cause I tell people all the time, you know, don't limit God. You know, yeah. I, I used to be like that. Oh man, now mm-hmm. they be like, well, man, try this. I'm like, well, now I don't know. I'm a gospel rapper, but yeah. I've learned what it do is when you do something like that. You know, it, it, it's I guess it will be considered positive. The hogs so, on. I heard that thing was bumping. Oh, and so, appreciate that, man. Oh, yeah, man. I bet, man, you did, and I heard it. And so, <laughs> I keep, man, I keep my to the ground on everything, man. And so, and so, awesome, when you did, it's like, it's that, it's more bait to lead people to Christ. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we, we live in social media time. Everybody yeah. knows it. Everybody. I tell people all the time, I tell all my customers <clears throat> that come out of in social media world, there's a good nosy and a bad nosy. Everybody knows it. If somebody posts a picture, we're going to look at the picture. If somebody posts a song, man, yeah. what Rocky talking about? Let me hear what he talking about. Oh, okay, this sound good. I'm going to download So everybody knows it. But It's a good nosy. Then you got folks that just got the bad nosy. They, they knows about everything. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's like, that's just another way 
to draw yeah. people in to the Lord. It's like yeah. sometimes I go places and and I I, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't thinking about doing no rapping. I go in the store and and mind my business, get something for the family. And mm. cut down one eye. I'm thinking I'm finna pick up some bread or something. My wife like say, "Hey, pick this up," and it turned into a whole conversation, you know, about yeah. the Lord. And I'm like, "I didn't go in for this," you know. So, man, <laughs> God, and I, I've learned a long time ago, even with this podcast, that mm. God can use anything, anything that draw to he, To me, he's like, he's about all means necessary. God, he's Yo. like, look. We living in a crazy time. I'm using whatever, whenever, however, to draw the attention to him. Yeah, that's really good by all means necessary. Because I started doing theme songs. I did one for Ninja Warrior, and I did right. one for different groups. And then uh, I did started doing schools like uh, Clinton High School and Conway, mm -hmm. my, my alma mater, Conway High School. And uh, and then I did uh, we did it for Marshall where we where we work and our my wife's a teacher at and Leslie there and anyway and it just went one thing to another but when I was working I work at uh, the Department of Human Services mm -hmm. and I help with uh, with uh, food stamps and Medicaid for aged and disabled one day I went to a conference and they asked me to uh, be on their entertainment committee one thing led to another and I wrote a song mm -hmm. about teamwork for our organization. And so, uh, man, it was amazing and, and got a lot of ministry through that. Then they asked us to come back to be a part of a new year's uh, celebration. And the whole, uh, like thousands of people were live streamed in to watch this in little rock. And we were able to sing about our Arkansas song where we mentioned right. all the different towns. And then we also did this teamwork mm -hmm. song. And I just am amazed at how, uh, the Lord gives you an idea and it's like, okay, I'm going to make a theme song for that. And then it turns into ministry, even when there's not one mention of Jesus or God or the church in any of the lyrics, it still comes forth, which is amazing to me. Right, right. And, and, and cause you know, even, even when they find out, okay, who is Rocky? Who is Rocky Thomas? Then they start digging and Googling. Right. Rapid fire. What's this rapid fire? Then they start digging. Oh, he a gospel rapper. Okay, he a pastor. And so it all goes back to God. You know, and it's like that that's 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 why I tell people all the time, I put it in a song a long time ago. I can't mm. remember the whole verse, but I know part of the verse it says something like um Jesus, so 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 I can't remember it. But he said he's doing he always doing his thing undercover. It's like mm -hmm. he's always doing the the undercover work to draw the attention back to him. And I love it, man. And, and, and I love hearing how he used different things to draw the attention back to him. Because the thing is, he want every, it's his will for everybody to be saved. I tell people, look, man, I gospel rap. I'm going to play dominoes. I'm going to try to beat you in dominoes every time. Oh, no. <laughs> If I can still play basketball, I can do that. I'm going to try to beat you. But I'm going to still turn that attention back to the Lord some way. You yes. know, every time. I tell people all the time, they be like, man, okay, you you, you gospel rap, but you over here playing uh, PlayStation. I say, yeah, I play PlayStation. Grab the sticks and get beaten mad and come on. You know, <laughs> I'm going to try to beat you 50 to nothing. And then I just seen where... <laughs> Jesus loves you. <laughs> just right. Just playing the game and it turned into a whole oh man, I thought you were just about Jesus and rapping and you don't do that. I said, man, I played it. Then it turned into a whole nother conversation. So mm -hmm. I love it, man. Hey, let me yeah. ask you. Your son sure. Blaze. Let's get into Blaze. All right. Sixteen years old. I saw the video, um, I think it was the heart ball. When y'all was y'all was talking about um you know how hey, y'all uh, got attached to the hardball. I went to I went to one of those events with my wife. Okay. Man, uh, awesome. I want to say it was four, maybe four years ago. Four years okay. ago, we got some tickets to come. Wow. We went out. Man, it was cool. We got yeah. out there. Man, hung out, met some folks. Look, met the governor. I yeah. met. Um, I'm gonna tell you how long ago it was. Uh, Brent Billima was the football coach. Okay. Met yeah. him. I whispered yeah. in his ear. I said, Coach. Get us to the championship, man. He said, oh, "Okay, okay." Because <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I was like, 
I, I, I know I'm not going to see him again, no more, but I'm like, we in the same room. He was like, we was in the same circle. So I got in the house. I said, man, get us to the championship so yeah. I can have something to talk about. I'm tired of getting beat by Alabama every year. I'm tired. That's and so, right. Man, talk about your <laughs> son. Even if he in the room, man, he can come on if he want to answer. But talk yeah. about his progression from how he got into music. The, you was talking about he had the heart surgery, like getting to all that, like even to today. Sure. Now he's rapping, and that and that I love that too. When the gospel rappers like us, we've been rapping forever, and now yeah. our kids is transitioning, you yes. know, over into that space, and it's like, oh, okay, they really, they really love this, they they really like this, they really into this. So, yeah, man, just talk about any, any way you want to run with it, man. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate that, man. So Blaze was born with uh, two holes in his heart. Right. And um, right off the bat, we had to pray and cried out to God. And they said, if, if it doesn't heal up in six months, those holes don't close. We'll have to do surgery. Right, well, right at the six month checkup, the doctor came in, listened to him and said, those holes have closed up. So we didn't mm. have to have surgery. So we're praising the Lord for that. And one day I was practicing and I was doing something with music. I know we were getting ready to go on a show or something. And, and I was just, you know, doing some fast rapping and practicing and all of a sudden and blaze is just like barely, I mean, he's very, very young, but he can't even talk. And all of a sudden the music stops and I hear him and he's going dip it, 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 dip it. And I'm going, is he rapping? Is my boy trying to rap? Cause he had heard me and I was like, wow, that's amazing. So from then on, man, it just grew and he just became just so good at it. And I never forced it on him. I never said, Hey, you're going to rap, you know, right, but right. man, it just, let, you know, let our kids choose. But man, we, he just took off. And and now like, we'll be riding down the street battling, you know, who can go faster, who right, can do more, right. you know, just crazy. But uh, anyway, he, he started with the rapping, but he can sing too. He got the best of me and Mandy. He can rap and he can sing and I right. sure can't sing. So Praise the Lord for that. He's a, you know, <laughs> a, a major threat to the enemy because he can sing and rap. And right. then he um, he started getting into technology. And uh, man, I ain't even gonna lie to you. The graphics that I don't have, I don't have time to tell you everything that he does, but, uh, but he, he's a trained weather spotter. He mm. runs his own weather teams. Uh, after the tornado, he was able to, you know, show all the weather people around our house, the, the news crews. Um, he's always doing the weather stuff. He runs the live stream and networking for our church. Right. Uh, Apple developer does the website, um, ham radio operator. And man, he's just all the time, you know, most kids his age are hanging out and partying right. and all that. And he's talking to grown men about ham radio repeaters and weather stuff. And he's with the weather watchers, Arkansas weather watchers, like 80,000 or over a hundred thousand followers now, right. man. I can't tell you enough because I will give him a challenge and he'll never, ever uh, be defeated. Like he'll figure it out, even if it takes him all night. Right. And so anyway, he was blessed with all that and just an amazing uh, person. But what happened was he was born with a vascular ring around his esophagus and trachea. And they said, as he gets older, this might start constricting. So we're going to have to watch this. So for those that don't know the story, he was in PE one day and he started getting short of breath. Mm. And all of a sudden he told Mandy and the nurse about it. And long story short, we, we thought, well, is this constricting? Surely not. And uh, anyway, it's 2015. So we went to the doctor and they said, yeah, this is constricting. He's going to have to have major heart surgery. So we were like, okay, so they're going to clip the ligament. They're going to replant the, the uh, artery but the aorta was pressed up against the chest cavity wall. Right. And he said, no, we're not going to touch the aorta because that's too risky. So we were like, okay. So we prayed and man, ever since I found out he was going to have surgery, I just kept thinking about that scripture where Jesus was asked who sinned him or his parents, that this man was born right, blind. Right, right. Jesus said neither, but that the glory of God would be seen. And I thought the glory of God is going to be seen in this somehow, some way. So we went through surgery and five days later, he's pushing me around in the wheelchair. <laughs> so we knew he was doing pretty good. Right. And, uh, but man, when he first came out of surgery, man, fever spiked to 103. The enemy was trying so hard to get us discouraged. And there was a lady from Memphis there. 
her daughter was literally in uh, the operating room getting a full heart transplant. Mm. She comes up to, to Mandy, didn't even know her and said, listen, your boy's going to be okay. The Lord's going to use him mightily and just ministered to her and didn't even know who she was. Right. And it was amazing that God, you know, always there when you need him. But after that, here's what happened. This is what I want to get to. Um, he had a scar from his shoulder blade all the way down to the middle of his back. They went in through the back and um, he had a, a tube and it was uh, taken that, that was uh, draining. They took it out and it was hurting him. And they said, listen, this thing's got to quit draining or we're going to have to put it back in. Well, that's the last thing you want to do because it hurts right. so bad. So we got the church on the line and we said, y'all are fixing to have church. It's Sunday morning. I want y'all to stand in the gap and I want y'all to pray for Blaze that this tube stops draining. They were like, okay, prayer warriors, we're on it. Sunday morning, they get in the altar and they pray. We get a, um, we get a, a report a little bit later from the doctor that thing quit draining finally and it never drained again. Mm. So that's the first, that's the first miracle. But now you ready for this? I hope our listeners are sitting down for this part. Go ahead. So, they check this out. They said they can't, they can't touch the aorta. It's too risky. So we're getting ready to leave. I'm back at work and Mandy's a uh, day before she and blaze leave for the, you know, to go home. And all of a sudden they do one more scan and they just stare at the scan and the doctors and, and the different tech people are looking at this and they're just staring. And finally, Mandy's like, what's going on? He said, I'll be right back. And he goes and gets the head person that's over the whole imaging department. Mm. They come in and they're looking at it. Now Mandy's really getting concerned. And I don't know any of this is going on. I'm at work. And all of a sudden she said, what is going on? And they turned to Mandy and they said, let me ask you a question. Did the surgeons do an aortic plexi on Blaze? And Mandy said, well, what is that? And she said, he said, that's where they take the aorta and they push it back up against the chest cavity wall. <laughs> and uh, Mandy said, no, they said they weren't going to touch the aorta. It's too risky. And she said, what's going on? What's wrong? And the doctor said this, there is now no constriction at all. <laughs> and everything is perfect. My. And so the, the surgeons clipped the ligament and replanted the artery. And my God pushed the aorta back against the chest cavity wall. Mm, 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 mm. Just, just thinking about that just gets me excited. Truly a miracle. And everywhere we go, every time Blaze is on stage, and we show that scar and we know he's a walking, living, breathing miracle. Yes, that's sir. That, so, that, hey, man, let me tell you something. See, see, I got the goosebumps over here, Viking. I'm I got telling the goosebumps. You, let me tell you, man. Sir. I tell yep. people all the time, man. God is still listen. Mm -hmm. He and I hope for people watching this. I hope for people watching this that's going through whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care what it is. That's he's right. still he's not just a pretty story we talking about. He's still that God that opened the Red Sea, closed yeah. the mouth of lions, was in the fire with the Hebrew boy. He's still that God. And and Man, I'm I'm listening to you talking about your son, man. Mm. I I remember our first daughter, bro. Mm. We now listen, this is our first child. Okay. We go to the hospital. Mm. Baby, it's delivered. You know how the nurses come in the door and my wife laying on the bed. They yeah. come in, they they check the uh they checked her um uh, legs, her hips. And they was they do they did some type of test. It's like a chicken bone, chicken wing type test. Mm. And okay. The lady walked out, and she said, uh, she said, nah, she said, something is clicking. She said, y'all hear that? We said, yeah, we hear that. It was like a click, like click, click, click. Every time she moved, like, click, click. Mm. And she said, um, she said, let, she left out. She said, let me go get whoever the doctor or the nurse was. And then this guy came in. He did the test. Same thing. They said, we're going to roll her down the hall to what, wherever. So... She came mm -hmm. back in. She came back in. The baby didn't, uh, Savannah didn't come back in. Now Savannah, is, she'll be 15 at the end of this month, Lord willing. So mm -hmm. she said, listen, she said, we ran a test. I forget what the test was called, but she said her hips, that clicking mean her hips are not together or something, and she won't be able to walk. 
Mm. You know, we new parents, we new marriage, new parents, you know. I yeah. said, okay. She walked out. I mm. went over by the bed and we gripped them hands. I just remember praying. Yeah. And the Lord put back on my he he put back on my heart a dream he showed me like maybe three months before she was even born of her. She had this burgundy dress on, running down the hallway, running, running. Mm. And I, while we was praying, he brought that dream back to my memory. Bro, yeah. they brought her back in that night. And they said, ah, you know, we ran some tests, and it is what we think it is. Mm. So this after we prayed, they yeah. took her back down the hallway, bro, the next day. Couldn't find nothing. <laughs> in fact, look, the doctor came in, bro. Mm. Was like, you know, I can't think of the name of that test, but they 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 put the baby legs up, and they like chicken wing. They shake them like that. It was like a loud click, like click, 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 mm. click. And she was like, you know, she won't be able to walk. She won't be able to run or anything. Mm. So man, we locked them hands together. We prayed, and we was like, Lord, we heard what they said, but we know yeah. what you can do. And yeah. man, they say, look here, she walking around, look here, running, everything. So, man, mm -hmm. whoever listening to this, God is yeah. still in the impossible doing business. Yeah. He's still in it, man. He's still in it. I'm telling you, man, because listen to your story. He It's mm -hmm. like he, he gave Blaze that forever so he can tell somebody else. You know, right. I know you, y'all, y'all, his parents, y'all gonna tell a story, but guess what? He's 16 around his friends. Mm -hmm. He gonna be around folks saying, you know, I don't believe in God. All he gotta do is say, look at the sky. Let me tell you about the story. Exactly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This God is real. I'm not supposed to be here. And so, yeah. man, I love hearing stories like that, man, because, yeah, God do have something for him to do, man. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, your your sons, I'm looking at my kids. I know other rappers that yeah. had kids, and I'm hearing similar yeah. stories. I'm like, it's like they finna push in this new wave. Mm -hmm. if, if it's gospel rap, I don't know. If it's, right. if it's some ministry, it's going to be some type of ministry something. But yes. it's like God going to use them, you know, to, to continue the work that, that we've been doing, you've been That's doing. Right. And so, yeah. man, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Let me ask you this, bro. Yeah. See, yeah. this this getting good. Yeah. Gospel rap, bro. I got to mm. get your input on it, man. I got mm. I got to ask, ask everybody this, man. Mm. Give me your thoughts on, and you can answer however you want to answer. On this show, man, you got the green light, bro. Okay. What's your thoughts on gospel rap now? Since you started to what you see now. The reason why I say that because... I know you see the same thing we all see. We see artists now reaching certain plateaus, but, mm. and here's the but. This, yeah. this guy told me this a long time ago. He said, mm. too many butts stink. He said, if it's too many uh -huh. butts, but this, but this, but this, it's stink. <laughs> I said, <Yeah>. okay. That's <laughs> all right, man. And so he passed away, man. I, I, I miss Brother Easter, man. He passed away a couple years ago. Oh, and so, but he used to say that. But yeah, here's the but. Yeah. These cats, they get into these plateaus, they say, well, I ain't a gospel rapper. I'm mm. a rapper that's a Christian. Or, you know, mm. I heard, oh, gospel rapper is, is corny. You know, they get mm. on major platforms saying this. I'm like, wait a minute. Yes. The gospel rap fan base grew y'all up to them points. Now y'all up there like, I'm not a gospel rapper. Man, what's your thoughts on it, man? Man, this is a great question. And first of all, before I talk about the genre as a whole, right? I want to look at how uh, how there's so much division within. Uh, you know, it's competition all the oh, time. Yes. You know, oh yes, oh yes, I know. And, I know. and what I've, what I've learned is, you know, the Bible says, you know, to to weep with those that that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. And I never had a problem weeping with the ones that were hurting you know what right. i mean like oh, right. you're going through some things i got you i'll pray for you but what's really telling is can you rejoice with those that are doing things that you wish you were doing you right, with me right right so, like when you got you got elder one up there really making moves rapzilla right you know you got 
all these things. Um, and you're like, you want to be happy for them. And that's the key is, can I get behind that? And can I truly rejoice or am I jealous and envious because I'm not there and they right, are. Right, so, right. So right off the bat, that's a challenge. And I see a lot of people keeping separate because of that. And it's not so much about, well, let's collab, do a song, or let's do a concert. It's just about the unity collectively right. of knowing that the ultimate goal, like you said, is for to have not the spotlight, but the searchlight, right? Right, right. right. To not see you, but to see Christ lifted up and to be searching for those that are looking for Christ so that we can bring them in. So, you know, we're searching. So, um, so as a whole, I've been disappointed in a lot of uh, just, you know, just actions of, uh, you know what I'm saying through the years of oh, yeah. uh, like business side of things, uh, man, just the, uh, the backbiting and just the, the envy, but on a, on a grand scale, I know the quality of gospel rap has really improved tremendously. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, even the independent rappers, um, man, it's just a whole nother level than when it was when we were first, you know, getting into right. it. So I'm thankful for that. But what happens is we get the quality, we get the production, but we lose the substance. Mm -hmm. There's no substance. And so what's happened is I'm not going to call out rappers that say, Oh, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a Christian rapper anymore. Right, right. That's their own walk, their own lane, whatever. But what I would say is that I can't imagine now a theme song is different or something like that, but I can't imagine not having a song where when you get done listening to the words, mm -hmm. number one, you know exactly who it's about. Right. Number two, you hear how you can get a relationship with Christ and that see what God's done in the, in, in my life. You know what I mean? Right. And so every word that I speak and every song, whether I, I did poetry years ago and I would write as if someone would hear that and it would truly minister and change their life. So when, you know, when I hear of, uh, you know, these platforms and these stages and they don't mention Jesus and they don't even hardly, I, I have a problem with that. I really do. I'm not trying to be holier than now. But we've been in this thing for a minute, 32 yes, years. Uh, and it's it's tough to hear because they come in, they do a few songs, they say, hey, I'm gospel rap. But like you said, once that once they're lifted up by their peers and by the gospel rap fans, then they're like, Okay, I don't need y'all anymore. Now I'm going to Hollywood. And it's right. a whole other level of of uh, you know, of selling out basically. And so I commend those that had the platform, and I would say this. Use that platform wisely. And right now, some are and some are unashamed. You got Bizzle, you got Brian Trejo, you got right, right. all those guys that you know exactly what they're about from the first beat to the end of the song. Um, and then you got some that are kind of back and forth and they're going to reach people, too. So I don't want to knock that. But, but just but. just use your platform wisely just like the football players remember when tebow put john 316 under right, his eye right, right. millions of people googled john 316 that night that's using your platform for the glory of god not for yourself and so i would say the production's great but sometimes the substance is lacking in the genre as a whole and there's a lot of this this uh division yes so. the unity uh moving forward so that that's what i would say to that Bro, um, you man, you answered it good, man. And I, I love oh. everybody. It's like everybody that that that's come on this show, the the this podcast. Yeah. They've all pretty much had the same answer, mm. but just gave a different way of the same answer. If that makes sense. And so, sure. I, I love the way you said that, and I I can speak from man experience where. Yeah, doing gospel rap, it, it 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 it's it's like people allow these things to separate the friendships, to mm. separate. Oh, we used to do shows together. We collab together. Now you don't call, you know. Mm. And I've reached out to all kind of artists. You no, know, like I said in the very beginning, uh, when, when we first spoke, I said, man, I made it a point to. Show the Arkansas artists first. Yes. First. Not because, oh, you know, Arkansas. No, because I'm like, I've been all four corners of this state. 
Mm-hmm. I know the talent. I, I seen y'all ministries. I know mm-hmm. how y'all get down. I seen it. So I'm like, I want to show that to the world. Amen. So people yeah. can see. I don't want to pat on the back. I don't I don't I don't do this for the claps. I don't mm-hmm. do it for the for the oh man. I don't even rap for that stuff. Oh man, that's that's right. dope. Man, sign an autograph here. I done been doing that stuff. Man, I, I don't do it for that stuff. I understand. I'm I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I remember the first show I did out of state, it was in Memphis. Mr. Mm-hmm. Dale, it was his show. It was yeah. called the Lando Draper's Conference. That's when I met Mr. Dale, his whole Holy South, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody in Memphis. c Doug, c Michael, yeah. all them boys in Memphis that yeah. night. Man, we go down there. We the only people from Arkansas. Mm-hmm. We go in there rapping. I'm talking about, man, shaking tire. Standing on chairs, they're like, mm-hmm. Man, who is these dudes right here? I'm like, Oh man, we swag down from the hat to the toe. <laughs> man, look here, Rocket. <laughs> the next day, I'm mad yeah. my business. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. He said, Man, you ain't do nothing. You mm. better minister that word over them beats. And he said it just like that. And people said, you know, I, some people didn't know, but they, they be joking. They be like, man, God to say, man. I said, yes, he did. He said, man, you didn't do nothing last night. You wow. better minister the gospel over that music. And I felt it so strong, it mm. changed my approach high right now. I'm like you. Like like when I hear somebody say, hey, man, here goes some beats. For your for your uh uh your EP or whatever, or can you collab or something? The very first thing I do is I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people? Mm, I can yeah. hear the beat. I can I, I kind of mumble things before I rap. I, if I hear something, like, boom, 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 yeah. boom. So I kind of get a flow going, and then I say, okay, now Lord, what you want me to say? And then mm. the Holy Spirit say, okay, start off by saying this, this, and that, and it just take off from there. Yeah. And so, man, but I loved what you, 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 you said that I, I've been, I wish in a perfect world that, especially with the gospel rappers across the board, not just statewide or regional wide, I wish sure. there was more unity. I wish mm-hmm. there was more collaborations without a hidden agenda, without sure. a hidden agenda. Mm-hmm. I tell people, I said, man, as long as I've been doing gospel rap, I've seen it on the artist side, the administration side. I've signed artists, paid them, did the shows, came out of my own pocket when we had to, like, we're talking about the lifeline, and I yeah. had to go, me and my wife, and, and the, our street team, we only had maybe about two or three street team members, go in mm. there, set that show up like four five hours before everybody arrived. And then mm. everybody go home. We got to break it down. They say, you got to get out here by 12. We're going to charge. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> told everybody at 11 o'clock, we pray and we go home. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see y'all. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Because we got to break all this stuff down. It took five yeah. hours of the week. I mean, we was moving to get sure. out of there. They'll charge, you know. And so yeah. I, I've been there, done that. But I've seen how things and 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 mm. I've opened myself for But I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm a cool dude. I talk to anybody. I chop yeah. up with anybody. I'm not one of these dudes like, oh, man, I'm doing this podcast. I'm doing this other stuff, man. I ain't talking to y'all. No. I said, man, but I've seen how things and people, like you said, man, I'm glad the one, Elder One, getting his shine. Mm. I tell people, I, tell, I said, man, I met him when he was 10. He came mm. by my office. Shout wow. out to Henry Keckley, his youth pastor. Yeah. I went to their church to do a show. He was like, hey, man, this little dude in here, he be rapping, and he a gospel rapper, but he 10. Can you talk yeah. to him? I said, well, bring him by the office. I met wow. him when he was 10, and his yeah. parents came by, and I told I told his parents, I said, listen, I said, I would love to sign him. I said, but I don't sign artists under 18 years old. I just don't because it's too technical. I did yeah. that before, and I seen how... You know how it is. You get on the road and some you you get into that, especially during the spring, summer, early fall. And man, you yep. on that road like you like in Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, right. Arkansas, Atlanta, and you just moving around. And mm-hmm. parents don't understand that. They say, "Well, that's you got my right. son on the road," and I'm like, "That's the nature of this. What we do." Yeah. 
That's you know, what so did. When, yeah. when I met him, he was 10, and I love yeah. seeing what he's doing now. I love it, man. I tell people, I said, man, I love it. I shake the pom-poms for everybody doing gospel rap. That's right. I said, I really yeah. do. I said, I said, I'm not a hater. I'm a celebrator. I said, I don't have time. Like, oh, man, Rocket doing the Ninja Bone, and he featured mm -hmm. all that. Man, I'm celebrating. I'm like, man, yeah. if people understand to me, if they understand what we up against, I'm like, why are we hating on gospel rappers doing gospel rap things? I'm like, man, for, I tell people all the time, for every 100 secular street artists, it's like one gospel rapper per 100. Man, we up against it. <laughs> that's why I'm like, that's why I was like, this podcast, man, I want to feature the gospel rappers. I'm not featuring whoever. I ain't talking about gospel rap. And there's nothing against them. Like, again, I play in dominoes. I right. beat your own man. But this is gospel rap, period. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I tell people, I said, man, we up against it, man. For every 500 uh, secular DJ, it's one gospel rap DJ. Wow. So we up against it. I was like, man, it, it, there's strength in numbers. And then this scripture hit me. You remember yeah. in the Old Testament, I can't think of who it was. It was 30,000. Um, I'm paraphrased. But mm -hmm. the Lord said, uh, who he's talking to? He said, uh, just use those 300 people by the water. Oh yeah. Right. Just right. Gideon. Just used Gideon. Right. He said, mm -hmm. just use them. He said, Man, we gotta fight them folks. He said, Man, you better get them three hundred, get to work. So, <laughs> I'm like, it's strengths and numbers plus mm -hmm. we got the Holy Spirit. That, that's yeah. that's the key. So right. and I'm like, man, I'm glad you said that, man, because I'm like, I'm if if people that know me know, I'm like I am for the unification of gospel rappers. And to me, another thing, too, I'm like, and I'm going to say something, ask you one more question. We'll okay. get out this. But I'm going to say, I got to get this out. Sure. For people that's listening, I'm like, I'm for the unification. And I wish that since we all are grown, that the grown people can have conversation. If somebody's saying, hey, man, I feel this way, I feel this way. So I'm like, well, why do you feel that way? Do you know if we come together and do songs, we both win and God win. Yeah. That's the key. So I'm like, man, mm -mm. Yeah. when I was making the list uh, for the podcast, I said, man, I got to get, there you go, Blaze. Uh, I told, uh, there you go, Blaze. Yeah. Hey, man, yeah. I'm up here running my mouth, man. Let me tell you something, man. I'm going to tell you something before I ask you this. Bro, you the future of this thing, man. You the future. I'm not, I'm not saying that because this is a show. You know, oh, you're supposed to say the nice stuff. No, man. God gave you a gift, bro. You the you the young bro in this game. You L the one. Man, I'm watching y'all. Like, I'm looking at, I'm sitting back like, man, I like this. Because we ain't going to rap <laughs> forever. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Rock, I ain't rapping, man. <laughs> uh, I hear you, man. I got a little more in me. But, man, when it's done, man, yeah. it's done. I want to I wanna see Blaze get down. I want to go to the show and be like, I'm not just saying this neither. If Blaze goes down, I say, man, I'm going to the show. I want to see it. You know, because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a celebrator of the genre because after years of doing this, I understand it, man. Blaze, tell us about what you're doing, man. You you got you got the spotlight right now. Well, um, there's me, a lot of scoot things. Up, scoot up, scoot scoot to your oh. right just a little bit more. There you go. Okay, we got you in there. We got you. Okay. Here, watch. Watch out. Here, move just a second. All right. I'm going right. back for yeah. a minute. Right there. Right, we're getting ready to wrap it up. There we go. Okay. All right. Um. You know, there's just a lot of things I was, uh, I've been doing some schoolwork and stuff, but, right. uh, you know, God's just given me so many gifts and stuff and, um, um, just using them to benefit him. That's sure. it, man. Listen, and, and you couldn't have said it no better than that. Let, let me tell you, when I was 16, man, I wasn't thinking about the Lord, man. I, and look at, I grew up going to church and yeah. man, I was 13 and my mom was like, you want to go to church? I said, no. And man, from there, it was like, 
you name it. I was in all kind of stuff. But what I love is that your dad and your mom, they put that gospel in you. Man, use it. Don't be ashamed because, you know, you're going to have friends. Soon you're going to be out the house in the free world, moving around. And folks going to be trying to test that God in you. They will. Mm -hmm. They do us now while we adults. They say, man, yeah. don't nobody care about Jesus. I said, well, you don't. I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rocky, I don't debate with these people no more, man. I used to do that. It's a waste of time, man. I said, yeah. no, man, I, I, don't, I don't have time. I'm like, listen. Yeah. I'm like I'm like Dave, not Dave, but I'm like Paul. And you and, and Blaze, I promise, live a little longer and you'll learn what I'm about to say. Paul said, I shake the dust off my feet and move on. Come on. Don't That's debate it. these people, man. Cause you're gonna it. have people say, man, I don't care about your God. I don't care about your gospel rapping. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And they told me in my face. And I said, hey, I, I shake the dust off of these J's and I keep on moving. I don't argue <laughs> with these people, man. God's people out there, man. I tell my own kids that I have a, hey, Blaze, I have a, I have a, uh, well, my, I have two daughters. My, my oldest, she'll be 15, and my little, she's six. And I tell mm -hmm. them this all the time. I, I, I try to instill them because I tell people, I said, one day they're going to see the world. And what we have to do as parents is we have to give them what we call 100% for 50%. And they said, what? why did you say that? I said, because the world going to teach them the other 50%. So we giving them a good start so they can get out because they're going to be faced with everything. You're going to be faced with everything, but hold on to the Lord. Yes. I'm telling you, man, I'm not saying this because this is a show. I'm saying this because... Now, in this social media uh, space, man, this world is crazy. It's so much stuff out there, and it's faster. And, you know, we didn't have the internet coming up. Yeah. You know, but y'all got it. You know, and so it's it's all kind of, man, it's, it's so much just wickedness and mess on the internet. It's just out there. But... Guard your eyes, guard your ears, you know. And your dad was telling about 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 the surgery you had, man. Use that as a testimony to win souls, mm -hmm. and just show if they say something, just show them the scar. Say, look at this. I don't, I don't got time to explain to y'all. Just look at this scar. Let me tell you what God. Did. <laughs> That's good, man. I'm Definitely. telling you, don't don't waste time trying to convince folks that don't believe. Just tell them about the gospel, and and hey, you plant the seed and move on. Don't That's wrestle it. all night. That's all Paul and them did. They said, hey, yeah. they said, hey, we going to the city of Fort Smith. We're going to tell the gospel, and we gone. And they got out of there. They been sat there, man, all the time. No. But, man, yeah. listen, Blake, I want to hear more from you, man. And we going to get you on one-on-one -on -one soon. Matter of fact, yeah. hey, Rocky, yeah, yeah I'm going to send some dates to you. We going to get you on one-on-one -on, -one awesome. on the show. Between Sounds February good. and March, we're going to get you on, man, for real. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Rocky, Please. let me tell yeah. you, man, this was good, man. Let me tell you. Cool. Yeah. Last question, man. What's next for Rapid Fire, man? Oh, man. Wow. Well, let me just say that um, my other son is Bryce. Bryce, He's a right. legend now. And uh, he came up to me the other day, and he's like, Dad, I wrote a song. And just out of the blue. Right. And, you know, he was he's a dancer. He does the hip hop and the glide and slide stuff and right. really right. good at that. And he wrote a song and he does the video stuff and he's following in Blaze's footsteps. Right. And, right. Uh, he did a song called It's Going Down. And I was like, whoa. And so it's on the project that we just dropped. But what's crazy is um, I'm definitely proud. Both of my boys, they're, they're they're unique in their own way, just like your daughters are. Right. Right. They, they found their passions but yet they always uh, find a way to incorporate the Lord, you know, into it, which is amazing. And so I'm very thankful for, for that. We just got great kids. But as far as what's next for Rapid Fire, we signed up. This is exciting. There is a group. Uh, well, first of all, me and Blaze DJ on Friday nights, uh, right. KCGS, Friday Night Fire. And that's that's an amazing time that we had there. Um, so we get to spend time together playing the best gospel music of all styles and uh, have interviews similar to this and things like that. But um, one of the things that um, I will say is that we are uh, putting out music 
a lot. We had three CDs this year alone. Mm. You know, with COVID, things slowed down. So right, we put no, right. no one like our God that we released a few months ago. This is where it all goes down. And now I literally just got CDs in last week for under my feet. Mm. And and it's uh and and many people don't know this, but I thought I was done. I was gonna walk away from the studio for a little bit. Right. Been there, done that, right? Oh yeah. You know, the Lord had other plans, man. And this week I got 10 new songs written. I'm like, what is going on? The Lord <laughs> is moving in overdrive. And I know right. people that know me are not gonna want to hear that, but I'm just saying the Lord's got something for us, man. But we're just uh we signed up with a uh, a booking agency, RPM Live. Uh, right. entertainment out of California and we met them through the radio thing and they're going to be booking shows and festivals for us once things open up so we're real excited about the uh, you know the venture with them and uh, man we're just going to keep preaching keep leading the church uh, Mandy and Blaze uh, wrote a song the other day that was a singing song very powerful about a mom and a son mm. that really was good so they're going to keep on writing hopefully they'll be writing more stuff and uh, man, we're gonna get blazed through eleventh grade. Whew, gotta pray on that one, man. Cause right. that's, you remember eleventh grade? That was uh, not easy. Yes, so, so to answer your question, get blazed through school. Uh, get these kids, uh, you know, where they need to be. Uh, keep the church going good, and of course, make sure that we don't get so busy working for the kingdom that we forget who's the king. Right, right. right. The word get so busy with stuff, and I've been there before. I even told you my story about having to, you know, step back. So I pray that I, we guard against that, um, so that we can spend time with our family and we can make the most of every opportunity. Redeem the time as the days are evil, so to speak. But uh, right. yeah, man, still doing music, still ready to minister, tell our story, whatever venue, whatever media, um, wherever the Lord leads, we'll go. And uh, we'll see what's next, man. But we're whatever it is, it'll be with my family and it'll be putting God first. And we'll be excited to see what that is. Man, that's what's up, man. I love that, man. For real. I, I love that. Rock is still cranking it out, y'all. Oh, Look at him. Still cranking. And the yep. key is coming with him. Look at man. I yeah. love that, man. I love yeah. that, man. Hey, we yeah. reached the end of the show, bro. But listen, I'm going to send yeah. something to your inbox. I was telling you earlier, we, we have been uh, working on the Lifeline, some virtual things with the Lifeline, and I'm going to hit you up soon um, okay. and just give you that information. Cause it's like the Lord put on my heart. He said, man, it's time to crank that thing back out. And mm. so, you know, we, we piled for a minute, and then he said, okay. He was showing me ways to work with it through social media. And okay. so we're going we're gonna to crank that out. I got to get you in it, man. I'm going to send some info soon, soon, okay. soon, soon. I'm going to send it to you. So on that note, bro, we're going to get off this thing, man. And hey, right. y'all, that was Rocky Thomas, Rapid Fire. Listen, y'all look him up, man. Follow him up. Rocky, give everybody your social media real quick. All right, sure. So Rocky Rapid Fire Thomas is the, the Facebook page, and then Rapid Fire Ministries is where you can find us on Facebook as well, the, the uh, ministry page. RapidFireMinistries.com is the website, and uh, there's also, uh, you know, we were Spotify and iTunes. Uh, we're on Instagram. I don't do that much. Blaze set it up. You know how the kids are. So right, right. get down with the Instagram. We're on Twitter, RapidFireMIN, RapidFireMen, short for ministries. And uh, yeah, but Facebook is about the best place to to find us and, and on our website as well, for sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, everybody, that was Rocket Thomas on the show. We're going to, hey, bro, I'm going I'm to I'm hit you. I'm going to inbox you with that Lifeline info soon, bro. All right, man. All right. Sounds good. Appreciate you having me, man. God bless you and your ministry, man. God Keep speed it up. to you, bro. God speed to you and the fam, bro. Sure. For sure. Man. And that was Rocket Thomas, y'all. Rapid fire. Look here, man. That was another good show, man. That's another good show, man. This is so much. It's so much that we can unpack with this show. You know, y'all just heard Rocky, he a pastor, artist, martial artist. His key is rapping. You know, it's so much, man. That's what I love about gospel rap because it show the things that the secular boys and girls don't show. 
Meaning, you know, you got actual rappers that's rapping with their wives. But in the secular arena, they don't do that. You know, they, they married, but in their videos, they with five other women that ain't their wife. So this was a good interview, man. This was a good interview. Listen, before we get off this thing, man, listen, we got to we gotta do some house cleaning, um, meaning we asking for donations. If you've been coming on this platform, you know we will ask for donations because your donations help us stay in the, on this podcast. You know, I, I don't have no script or nothing like that. But donate to the show. Uh, look down below. You can see below this um, this this screen here. You see some uh, information about donate. Uh, we do. Uh, you can donate through Cash App. PayPal, um, uh, Vimo, at Skyway Media. I mean, I'm sorry, dollar sign, Skyway Media for Cash App and Vimo. And for PayPal, it's paypal.me slash Jenkins Business Ventures. So you see the information at the bottom, man. Any donation would do $1, $100, $10, $1, $1,000. Your contribution help us stay um, I don't want to say on the air. I guess we on the air, though. But your donations, it help us. You know, we're not using it to pay the bills. We're not using it to buy shoes. We're not using it to buy, what's this drink in my cup? This Gatorade. We're not using it to buy Gatorade. But we do need money, just like y'all need money, to pay your bills and to live every day. We need money to live every day, too. So uh, if you find your heart to donate, donate. Any donations would do. And if you donate, we will shout you out. Or if you uh, want to be anonymous, we can keep it anonymous. So on that note, man, we're going to get off the stage, man. This was another good podcast. Um, we'll be back tomorrow night with show number 23 uh, with another great artist uh, tomorrow night. So y'all tune in, man. Y'all can follow us on social media at the refill show everything that's youtube uh instagram facebook uh everything twitter well we got to get the twitter we have the twitter um probably next week uh but at the refill show everything on social media is at the refill show that's not t-h-e but d-a d-a refill show everything on social media so at the refill show and so on that note man we're gonna get off this thing man we're gonna see y'all next time man listen if you're an artist if you're a dj or influencer promoter you want to be on the show look at the bottle email us uh at the refill show at gmail.com we got a new website coming soon you'll be able to go there and fill out everything and um uh, you know if, if if you rock with the gospel rap culture we want you on the show so uh, on that note, man, we're going to get off this thing. We glad y'all tuned in tonight and rocked out with us all the way to the end. So uh, we building, we grinding, we growing, and we figuring this thing out. We trying to get from show 22 to show 200. So y'all y'all stay with us. Y'all rock with us as we continue to build this thing out and grow this thing uh, through social media. And so... Um, yeah, y'all come back uh, tomorrow night, show number 23, same page. Uh, also, go to the refill page on Facebook, like the page, share the page, comment, tell us what you think about the show. Uh, and we go from there. You know, we're doing this for the culture. We're doing this for the artists, the DJs, the promoters, and the influencers. Uh, and if you want to be part of what we're doing, soon we have some information. If you want to join our digital street team, uh, to just help us, you know, build this out and, and put, you know, put it out more in more areas, um, build more awareness of what we're doing. Uh, we have some information for uh, people if you want to be a part of our digital street team. So, again, we're growing this thing out, man. And I'm going to do this shameless plug, too. I got some new music coming. Y'all be, be prepared. I got some gumbo Hot out on the stove right now. It's cooking on the stove right now. We got some hot gumbo, and it's coming. 
And so um, I'll I let y'all know about that soon. So on that note, man, we're going to get off this thing, man. And uh, I'm your host, Ron Daniel. Boom, boom, give y'all that double chunk, and we gone.